They found that he had actually put a cell phone charger in through his urethra or pee hole into the bladder. Today, I'm sharing with you some crazy medical stories where people got objects stuck in their bladder. I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you see here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give me a big thumbs up. We're gonna start off by discussing some shocking patient stories. Then we'll go on to discuss exactly what is urethral sounding or the practice of putting things inside the pee hole or urethra. Then we'll move on to what are the risks of urethral sounding. And lastly, if you are going to urethral sound, although I do not recommend it, I'm gonna go over how to do that safely so you don't end up in the emergency room. So the first story is about a woman who went on a date with her husband and she was using this fire bear that went on a necklace so that she could wear it and then use it later. And when they were intimate together, they were using the vibrator and then they lost it. And she actually could feel the vibrator inside her abdomen. So they went to the emergency room and they found this vibrator on the x-ray of her bladder and subsequently had to have surgery to have it removed. The only thing I could find from the surgery was this picture where they actually show the grasping of the vibrator with a forceps. And what it looks like is that they are in the bladder, likely with a cystoscope and grabbing the vibrator out of the bladder. The reason they couldn't grab it any other way without surgery was because it was actually turned and flipped in the other direction. So how did this happen? Well, presumably when they were fooling around with this vibrator, it went through the urethra because it is pretty narrow. It's about half a centimeter wide and it probably went through the urethra and into the bladder. Was this an accident or was this on purpose? Hard to say. The second story is about a man from India. And this happened really recently in June where he went to the doctors and said, I have swallowed some earphones. And so they waited for him to pass these earphones via his stool. They gave him laxatives and nothing came, but he continued to have significant pain in his belly or abdomen. They then did an endoscopy, which means they looked through the colon with a camera to see if they could identify where these earphones were. They they didn't find it there either. Eventually they got an x-ray and they found that he had actually put a cell phone charger in through his urethra or pee hole into the bladder and had coiled up and sat inside the bladder. So he had to then go through surgery to get it removed. From the news reports, it sounds like they actually made an incision in the abdomen to remove this cell phone wire. And they actually have a picture of the cell phone wire after removal. And this, you know, really got delayed because the patient was embarrassed to tell the providers or doctors that he had done this. And I think that that is really important that if you've done something that you are embarrassed to tell your doctor about, but might be contributing to the problem you are experiencing, you need to let us know so that we can help you. Trust me, we've seen it all. We will not shame you. We will not embarrass you. We will not judge you. We will just take care of you. And the next story is a teenager who was experimenting. He cut off the end of a cell phone charger and inserted it into the urethra and it got tangled up inside the bladder and inside the urethra. And so, so they were, however, in the emergency room able to remove this at the bedside with lubrication and gentle manipulation without him having to go through surgery. But again, another story that happened not too long ago. The last story that I found was actually reported in the medical literature. And this was a story of a man who inserted magnetic beads into the urethra one by one, and he kept inserting them and kept inserting them until Eventually he tried to pull them out and he couldn't because they had formed a ball inside his bladder. This was actually a really challenging case for the urologist. That's why they actually published this in the literature and they found 14 other cases of magnetic beads being stuck in the urethra. And the reason this is so challenging is because you have to take out each bead one by one. Of course, they're magnetic, so they have a strong pull to each other and they can make a big knot in the bladder like they've done that patient. So it's very, very challenging. When you get things stuck in the urethra, it can actually require, as I've described, an incision in the abdomen to get to the bladder. It can require going through the urethra with a camera or it can require an incision beneath the scrotum, between the scrotum and the anus called the perineum to actually get access to the device that is lost in the urethra. Why do 
people put things inside their urethra? Well, the number one reason that people do this is because they actually derive sexual pleasure from the act of inserting something in the urethra. The other cohort finds that there is some psychological thrill to the act of putting something in the urethra, but either way, they are deriving some sort of enjoyment from the action. And you may be wondering, how common is this? Well, if you look at the studies, there are two major studies that have looked at this. One surveyed 2,000 men who have sex with men and asked them if they've ever participated in urethral sound and they found that 10 to 11% of those people actually had tried urethral sounding at some point. Another study looked at 400 men with genital piercings who could be sexually active with women, men, or both, and they found that about 24% of them had tried urethral sounding. Also, I found a Reddit group for urethral sounding that had 22,000 people following that particular Reddit thread. So it's not uncommon. And what kind of objects are people using? Well, you can see that people are using all sorts of different objects and fluids for urethral sounding, but there are certainly risks associated with urethral sounding. These can include a risk of getting urinary tract infections. If you're inserting any sort of foreign body into the urethra, you're at risk for getting a urinary tract infection. Also, if you have any friction when you pass that urethral device or object, it can result in a urethral stricture. Once you get a urethral stricture, that's a narrowing of the urethra. And over time, that can create problems with you having difficulty urinating. So having a reduced flow, having the sensation that you have to go very often or very frequently, and having trouble emptying your bladder. And this could require further surgeries down the line. And lastly, of course, this object can get stuck and that will very often require surgical removal and a trip to the emergency room. So generally speaking, I don't recommend urethral sounding, but if you're going to do it, then you should do it safely. And how do you do it safely? Well, you want to use urethral sounds or devices that are actually made for sounding. They are specifically made to go inside the urethra, so they are safe and they have the right mechanisms in place to prevent them from getting lost in the bladder or getting stuck in the urethra. Secondly, you wanna make sure to sterilize those sounds. So whether that means putting them in boiling water and letting them cool off before use, and you also want to use fresh lubricant and use them well lubricated. You don't wanna use the lubricant that's been sitting on your night stand that probably has lots of bacteria and germs in it because of being open for so long, sometimes using those single use lubricant packets can be much better. If you like this video, make sure you check out my reaction to the Reddit thread, Bad Men's Anatomy. I think you'll really enjoy that. Thanks so much for watching and always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.